Okay, so I have set up my stage and I've exported them as frames onto the timeline and I have animated on the timeline. I've even created in between so that it sets to reset with a, a nice crossfade into the beginning. So I am good. How do I save this? Well, first I hit Command S. I save my stage file at this stage. Next, I go to File, and I say Export, Save for Web Legacy. What does that mean? That means this is using old coding, because GIF is the oldest type of digital image. So to open up this old saving window, it's going to give me options. And these options are actually very interesting, can make pretty big differences. Whenever you save to a GIF, there's only 256 pixel colors allowed. That's the maximum. You can make it even less if you want to. I don't know why you would want to. But the way that the computer generates what those 256 colors are, you can select. So I usually use selective, but you could try perceptual. And maybe you'll like the palette it generates better. You can view it. This is showing it pixel for pixel. But to fit the whole image on, you can just zoom out, right? You could try adaptive. And each time, the palette will be a little different. That looks a little grainier, but it's a little bit more saturated. So this gives you a lot of control. And then there's restrictive. And basically, that looks the grainiest. This is pretty terrible. <laughs> right? So... Generally, you want to stick with the defaults. Selective is pretty good. And then, under quality, I like it to be smoother for this kind of animation. Because it's rough pixels. GIFs will not only limit it to 256 pixels, but also whole lines of pixels will shift one pixel every once in a while. Pixel slippage, which sounds like something you, know, you need a special yogurt to fix. But... These are the settings I use that I like. Then you hit save. It will save with the same name as your PSD file. So that's fine, but it will have GIF after it. So I'm going to save that to the desktop. And then to test it, you go to your desktop. You find it. It's the one with GIF at the end. right? And then you're going to open it, not with preview. So if I just double click it, it will open as like a slide deck in preview, which is kind of fun because you can just hit the down arrow and animate through it super fast. And then you go backwards. Ooh. It's like playing with a record. But in order to test the animation script that's coded into it, you need to view it on a web browser because that's how GIF animation scripts work. So you're going to open it with a web browser. It could be Chrome, but I'm going to use Safari because it's the only thing I use Safari for. So there we have it open. I see the the animation, I see the timing. And you know what? I think all of it could be a little faster. You know that default 0.3? It's just not quite as smooth as I want for that kind of jump. So what do I do? Well, I have it on the stage. And right up until the explosion, right up until 0.2, I'm going to select all those frames with shift. And I'm going to change those timings from 0.3 to 0.25. That's as far as you can go, or at least in all the versions of Photoshop I've used so far. You can only go two decimals deep. So I can't go 2.57, right? But I can go 0.25 and see if that runs a little bit smoother. Now, Photoshop will actually preview it because it's showing millions of colors, right? It will preview it a, t a fraction slower than the GIF will process because the GIF isn't having to show so many pixels, right? And there is a processing delay within Photoshop. But I like that a little bit better, even though it's so subtle. So this is being pretty picky. So now what do I do? I save it, and then I go to File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. Use the same things I chose before, say Save. Save it to the desktop, replace my old one. And then test it in a web browser, and I'll use Safari. Nice. 
So now I think the movement of the mosquitoes a little bit better. His jumping up is a little bit better. But then I think his, his fluttering down is a little slow. So this is me being really, really picky for timing. But there, there, I think I can make those 0.2 instead of 0.25. So this is really taking advantage of setting the frame delays to optimize it, right? And you can play with decimal points here and there. Like maybe I want the mosquito to move just a little bit faster before my creature appears. So I'll set those to 0.22. Okay, and that looks good to me. So, again, save the PSD file, millions of colors. Then, save... Actually, there's another thing that bothers me. You see the slight glow I have around the edge here? That's not going to bother me on a white background, but on a gray background, that kind of bugs me a little bit. What I can do at this point is I can crop it, hold down Option, and just trim it on all sides a little bit. Hold down Option and Shift so it's a clean square. I'm just going to crop it to right there. And that's going to cut through all of my frames. And it kind of cleans up the borders. But the problem is it's no longer 800 by 800 pixels, right? So then I'm going to change it back. And it's showing you how this doesn't affect the animation. So if I go to image size and I now force it to be 8 inches by 8 inches again, even though I cut off a quarter inch, and I play it, it all still works. But strangely, I have that glow back. So that's just an, an aspect of what's called simultaneous contrast. So if you notice that, you try to fix it, you're going to be annoyed because it will always be there. So worry not. Okay. I'm going to export it for the last time as my GIF to the desktop. I'm going to test it for the last time in Safari. Because there's only so much tinkering you have time to do with timing. But that looks better. I just need sound effects. GIFs don't come with sound, right? That GIF file can go right into Canvas. So if I go to the assignment, I don't actually need this stuff. This is just to, to help you build over the weekend. But the first requirement for this assignment is the rough storyboard. The second requirement is the GIF animation. Drag and drop that in. I'm going to shrink it to be a little bit smaller. You don't need to label it, but I will. And it should be set to loop forever. Whether it's 9 frames, whether it's 21 frames, however many frames it might be. Right? And then the next requirement is the refined storyboard. And the refined storyboard is going to have the dimensions of 30 inches by 40 inches. It will be the exact same for everyone at 100 pixels per inch which ironically is big enough to print at 8 by 10. <laughs> so how do I make that? Well, that's my next step. And that looks like this. Okay. 
Before I do that, I can do one extra step, which is nice because the the GIF is limited to very few pixel colors. And right now I can view it with millions of colors. I can change from the the frame by frame timeline to the video timeline just to click on the options in the timeline and say render the video. I'll keep it as the same name, but now it will save it as an MP4 file. And I'm going to replace the one I tested before because I like the timing better. And where did it save? It saved into my folder because that's where I opened it from. So this MP4 file I test by viewing on a Mac in QuickTime. This would be able to play on Instagram. It could play on TikTok, but it can't play in Canvas, right? It needs a video player to play. But GIFs are not supported on video players. They're only supported in web browsers. So you can't put a GIF animation up to TikTok. You have to convert it to an MP4. And this is one way to do that. Right? And you'll see it's the exact same thing. You just get a lot more pixel variation. So you won't have that kind of fragmented look unless you intend for it to have it. That is not something you put into Canvas. It's not required. It's an extra file. So I'll mark that as purple. My GIF is required and upload it. Mark it as orange. And my rough storyboard as a JPEG is required. Mark that with orange. Now I need the refined storyboard. So to do that, I go back to my frame by frame view in the timeline. And the first thing I do is select all of them. Remember, I've already saved it. And what I'm going to do is a little weird, but it is helpful, even though I don't particularly need it for my example. You might need it for yours. I'm going to click on the frame by frame timeline window options, and I'm going to say flatten frames into layers. Notice that that is the opposite of what we did before. Before we made frames from layers, now we are flattening our frames into layers. When you do that, your animation will work exactly as it did before, but on top of your layers, you now have things called frames. And each of those frames is at 100% opacity. So if you did anything kind of messy with your layers to get your animation to work, this will clean it up for you. Underneath frame one, you're going to want to click on the layer, the last layer you have, hold down shift, go to your bottom layer, and delete all of those. And even though you deleted all your layers, <clears throat> the animation will still work fine because you outputted the frames. Now you are safe to trash them and turn off the timeline. Now because I I flattened frames into layers, I now also have all these transitional frames that I animated on the stage, right? And I might want to use those. We'll see. Okay. Now I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, how am I going to choose the nine panels that will tell my story? And the easiest thing to do is to find your middle panel. So my middle panel is when he chomps down on the mosquito. So maybe right there, that's a good middle panel. Then I'm going to mark that with a color. I'll make it yellow. So that's my center. Now I need to give layout space around this. Right now this is 8 by 8 inches by 100. You need to make sure it's that. And I'm going to use my guides by clicking on the ruler. Moving down, I have my guides all the way around it. I need to make sure I'm in inches again. So I say File, um, or Photoshop, Settings, Units and Rulers. Make sure it's in inches, not in pixels. So you can see those 8 inches. Because now we're using Photoshop as a layout tool, which is the thing it's worst at, which is why there's things like, like InDesign, you know, made specifically for, for layout. But we're going to do it in Photoshop. What Photoshop is very good at is growing things perfectly out from the center. That's really the only thing it's good at. And we can make guides, and we can show grids, and we have rulers. So I want this center panel to be directly in the middle of my canvas. And I'm going to grow my canvas 
by going to image canvas size, 